In this video, we will review how to use inverse trigonometric functions to solve for angles inside right triangles. Let's do a quick review of how we use trigonometric functions uh, to solve for unknown sides. So in this example, we have uh, a right triangle with a known angle. We have a known hypotenuse and we have an unknown side that's opposite the known angle, 37 degrees. Opposite and hypotenuse combine when we're looking at the sine function. We recall that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And so if we use that here, we can see that the opposite is a, the hypotenuse is 7, and that should be equal to the sine of 37 degrees. And then by isolating a, we get 7 times the sine of 37 degrees. That's an exact value. And if we want a decimal approximation, we can plug that into a calculator. And when I do, I get approximately 4.21, which is the length of the unknown side indicated by the symbol a. Okay, so this is how we can use a trigonometric sine function to find an unknown side length in a right triangle. And the other trigonometric functions, cosine and tangent, work similarly. But what we're going to do next is turn this around. Instead of having an unknown side length, we're going to have an unknown angle. Now we're going to start similarly here because the side lengths that are indicated here are again the hypotenuse and the side opposite the angle indicated by the symbol a. So sine of a degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, 4 over 7. So how are we going to get the a by itself? Well, this is where we use the inverse trig function. So basically, we apply the inverse sine function to both sides of this expression. Since sine of a degrees and four-sevenths were the same value, th the outputs you get from plugging them into the sine inverse function will also be the same. And because A is a degree measurement between 0 and 90 degrees, sine inverse and sine here in order like this basically cancel each other out, leaving you with just A degrees. So uh, we need to evaluate sine inverse of 4 sevenths, and we need to do that in degrees in order to get the right value for A. So we need to make sure that if we're getting a decimal approximation with a calculator, that the calculator is in degree mode. When I do that, I take sine inverse of 4 sevenths, I get 34.85 as a decimal approximation. Okay. Let's look at another example. Uh, solve for theta. Well, notice this time there's no degree symbol here. So by convention, that means theta should be measured in radians. Now, what are we looking at in terms of the side lengths here? This 6 is opposite the angle theta, and this 9 is adjacent to the angle theta. So opposite and adjacent combine with the tangent function. If I look at the tangent of this angle theta, it should give me opposite over adjacent, which is 6 over 9, and that reduces to 2 thirds. So then I'm going to take the inverse tangent of both sides. and get theta equals inverse tangent of two-thirds. But this time I'm working in radians because we didn't have a degree symbol here uh, and because there was nothing else to indicate that we wanted degrees. So 
this would be an exact answer and if we evaluate this on a calculator being careful to make sure the calculator is in radian mode we get 0 0.59 radians for an approximation All right, let's do one more. Let's express the angle here as a function of B. So B represents the side length, but we don't have an actual value for B. So we're not going to come up with a decimal approximation here. We're going to come up with an expression in terms of B. Once again, we can see that the sides we're given are opposite and adjacent to the angle theta. So we want to use the tangent function tangent of the angle theta is equal to 6 over b and then if I take the inverse tangent and apply that to both sides of this equation I can get theta to be inverse tangent of 6 over b and I'm just going to indicate here that we're expressing things in radians because there's no indication of degrees. However, uh, it turns out that the same formula would work if we wanted an answer in degrees. We would just interpret the inverse function in degrees by if we plugged in a value for b, making sure that our calculator was in the correct mode.